Welcome back to the HBCU Digest. Today, we are privileged to be joined by the esteemed president of the Jackson State University, Dr. Thomas Hudson, uh, who joins us uh, to talk about a, a number of, of amazing things that have happened at Jackson State. And it's almost hard to, to say that they're going unrecognized because one, JSU is so large and it means so much to that region of the country. Uh, but you, you don't you don't really hear it pushing beyond Mississippi. So, Brother President, we appreciate you taking time today. First, let me ask you the question. You have been uh, part of a, a cadre of presidents and, and a unique uh, group that has transitioned from interim leadership to full time uh, positioning in the in the presidency. For you, what is that like at a school like Jackson State, which, again, is one of our largest, one of the more comprehensive, one of the most valuable and one of the most scrutinized, particularly in Mississippi, what is the different or what are some of the differences between the interim position and the permanent position? Well, first of all, Jared, and I appreciate uh, the opportunity to be here with you and uh, just discuss, you know, the various issues uh, and things related to Jackson State University. A uh, long time admirer of your work. So thank you so much for this opportunity. But to answer your question, you know, in that interim role, you really dare to keep the institution steady and not a lot of opportunity to realize and implement a vision. Uh, you're generally just there to keep uh, the course. And while you do want to make improvements, it's really more of that day to day approach. My situation was somewhat unique for a couple of reasons. One, uh, I'd been at JSU for over eight years in various roles. So I really understood the inner workings of the university prior to becoming acting. Uh, so yes, you're there to keep the course, but there was also more of an expectation that I would be able to do some things and really push the ball forward based on my experience of having been at Jackson State and really knowing Jackson State University. Uh, also, you know, with respect to COVID and just various things, it really evened the playing field in terms of what we were all dealing with and what we were all going through together. So it really wasn't about experience. It wasn't about titles. It was really about all of us trying to figure out in this pandemic, in this new environment, how do we continue our mission of educating students? And in our situation, really educating those African-American minds that we've been doing for over 140 years. Probably the best thing that happened to me was uh, our commissioner, Dr. Rankins, uh, telling me upon his appointment to me of me as acting, I expect you to do the job as president of the university and I expect you to lead that institution as such. That really took a weight off my shoulder because I never had to wonder, do I make this decision? What do I do? You know, being in an acting role, can I do this? I was really free to do those things and act in the best interest of Jackson State University. So now that I am president, you know, I am in the process of implementing that vision that we talked about earlier that really solidifies the university's rightful place in the 21st century. And that will be detailed in a strategic plan that will be released this fall. Uh, some of the things that we'll talk about, you know, moving JSU from an R2 institution, research institution to an R1. Uh, as you know, of the 131 top research institutions, none are HBCUs, and we aim to change that. Mm. And so also aside from that, enhancing our student experiences, enhancing our academic program offering, academic offerings, and other those are some of the other things we plan to do here at Jackson State University. You guys have taken some some big steps in terms of stabilizing the enrollment. You talked about COVID. We'll get into that in a second. Uh, but you've made changes to uh, tuition uh, infrastructure for out of state students. Yes, uh, you're you're in, in developing even more programming uh, for for bridge uh, bridge students from high school directly to the institution. Correct. What are some of the important factors that you believe have to be in place for a place like Mississippi, where secondary and post-secondary outcomes are a little bit lower than you would find in the rest of the country. Economic indicators are certainly lower than you would find in other places. How does JSU look to factor as a major institution that is affordable and accessible to a wide range of students when some of those numbers are just so tough when you look at them? Well, you just said it, right? That affordability, that accessibility, how do we offer this first class education that we have here at Jackson State University to the masses? Uh, who do we go after? Certainly you go after those high school students, uh, those who have graduated from high school, your junior college students, 
but you also branch further into those non-traditional students, those who, uh, like my mom, entered the workforce at a later age, well, looking to enter college at a later age to better benefit from the workforce. Uh, so those are some of the things that we look at from an affordability standpoint. You are correct. We have made some tuition adjustments. Uh, in the past to make JSU more affordable for those out-of-state students, uh, those in the Southeast and really across the United States to better position us uh, to be competitive in that market. And again, going back to what I talked about earlier with the program offerings, just really offering a good value and a good bargain uh, for those who are looking to continue their education and really move forward in their career. There, one of the big reasons that, that people who are JSU born and bred uh, call the school the I love is because it seems like JSU is 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 really intentional and really focused on loving folks back. And when you take a look at the news that reports on the successes of JSU alumni across all kinds of industries, you just constantly see a stream of like, look what these Tigers are doing. Look what they're doing, getting elected in these these positions. And this sister just got appointed to commissioner of such and such. It's it's so much it it it's almost far and away than I have ever seen in any other HBCU of, of alumni success being reported as institutional success. Number one, why do you think that that's such a part of JSU culture? And two, how in the world do y'all keep up with all these alumni so that well, they can I'm, share their stories of success? Well, I'm gonna answer the second question first. It's really about alumni engagement. It's about uh, making sure that we stay connected with our alumni, whether it's through newsletters. Uh, calls. I make it a point daily to talk to alumni. Uh, I'm in the midst of doing alumni visits across the United States. I, States. I did Houston and Dallas last month. Uh, later this month, I'll be going to Chicago and Detroit and also be visiting other cities as well. So it's really about that alumni engagement and staying connected with our alumni and really seeing what they're doing, the great things they're doing out there. Uh, we are over 50,000 strong. And we are in every industry, every area, everything you can think of, JSU alumni are not only doing it, but they're thriving in those areas. And that success is just ind indicative of the quality education that Jackson State University uh, provides. And so our alumni, they find they're very creative and they find those innovative ways to give back to JSU as well. So we're very proud of our alumni. I mean, we all know about Cortez Bryant, the co-CEO of the Blueprint Group, who has managed uh, artists like Lil Wayne, Nicki Minaj, and Drake. Uh, it's just really established himself in the music business. Uh, we have two of our alumni who are planning for a multi-million dollar tech hub uh, here in the city of Jackson, and it will be the first of its kind within this city. And just recently, you talked about politics, you know, several of our alumni won political seats throughout the state. And another JSU alum, Homer Wilkes, was recently nominated by President Biden to be the USDA's Undersecretary of State for Natural Resources. So again, just a multitude of uh, Secretary of Agriculture, I'm sorry. So just a multitude of alumni doing great things uh, uh, with that JSU footprint. Alumni are important to recruitment of students as well and sending their babies to the institution. You talked a little bit earlier about access and affordability. Let's shift a little bit to the safety of the institution. And I don't mean that from institutional public safety perspective, but as you know, from COVID, right. we're seeing the Delta variant mm -hmm. um, really spike in, in areas all over the country. The South is not an exception to that. What do you think are, what are your biggest concerns about the Delta variant? this fall as everything comes back in full? And also what are some of the things that make you optimistic that JSU will be able to provide a safe environment for student faculties and staff? Well, the concern, of course, the Delta variant is a concern. And, and the concern is just really having to prepare for that next wave. And for us, what that means is, you know, uh, fewer hospital beds available, uh, you know, more people getting sick overall and, and just really being prepared for what could be uh, yet another wave of this pandemic. Um, what keeps me optimistic uh, I will say, first of all, the availability of the vaccine. You know, we do offer the vaccine here at Jackson State University in a great partnership uh, with Jackson High's Comprehensive. Uh, first Lady Biden, uh, Jill Biden, was actually here visiting our uh, vaccination site to really highlight the great work that's been doing, been doing uh, right here on this campus. So 
very excited about the availability of the vaccine. We have a great plan that we're going to roll out, which we'll talk about some of the continued requirements with respect to masking, social distancing, doing those things that will allow us to reopen, but do so safely. So we are cautiously optimistic that we will uh, have a good, safe fall. We'll remain vigilant uh, with respect to our protocols. We will continue to push that vaccine. I encourage everyone uh, to get vaccinated. Uh, it's safe, it's easy, it's free, and it's really the only way that we're all gonna get back to some sense of normalcy in the midst of this pandemic. Part of normalcy in HBCU culture is football. Uh, <laughs> and it's interesting because your your appointment in the permanent position kind of coincided with the appointment of Deion Sanders, head football coach, right? Mm -hmm. And with his arrival, there's been obviously so much attention, but a lot of good in the way that he's been able to leverage corporate uh, attention to the institution and to HBCU football at large. Right. Um, positive or, or or at least more balanced coverage of HBCUs in, in sports, national and local. Um, and he, he's been an advocate. Have you have you been how what, what to what degree have you been pleased with what Deion Sanders brings to JSU to HBCU football? And what do you expect happens when there's a, a quote unquote regular season for the Tigers? Well, very pleased so far uh, with everything uh, Coach Sanders, Coach Prime, uh, as he likes to be called, uh, brings to the table here at Jackson State University. Uh, just the positive energy, the attention, uh, all of those different things really shining a very positive light on the university. And then also those things that you all don't see, the way he interacts with the student athletes, uh, the way that he really takes care of those kids, the way that he advocates and helps them get better facilities and different things like that. Uh, really very proud of what he's done uh, with our program thus far and look forward to what's to come. And I always have to credit our uh, dynamic athletic director, Ashley Robinson, uh, for really working to help make that uh, make that a possibility here at Jackson State University. Going forward, you know, as president, I expect a lot of wins, uh, first and foremost. Uh, I also expect uh, that positive attention to translate uh, throughout the entire university. You know, a great football team, a great athletic program helps enrollment. It helps uh, morale, both student morale and alumni morale. It helps your giving. All of those things happen when you have an athletic program that's successful, thriving, and that the university can be proud of. We have a great history here at Jackson State University, uh, really an unparalleled history uh, in football amongst HBCUs, and this is really just an enhancement of that. And then the final thing, I, I think you make a perfect segue to talk about the history because JSU has an extraordinary history, uh, not just as an HBCU, but as an American higher education institution. Mm -hmm. But so much about what our folks love about HBCUs is rooted heavily in that history. And considering how comprehensive the institution is, how much it wants to grow, how much it means to improving communities in Jackson and throughout Mississippi, how do you bridge the love for that history with the appeal to people to say, now invest in making a new history, invest in a football program so we don't have to talk about as much as we love him, Walter Payton, invest in these programs so that, you know, we, you, you are seeing us transition into more innovative and substantive ways in, in industry than we already are. How do you get people from, I love what we were 30 years ago to, I love what we can be 30 years from now? Well, that's a great question. And that's really what we all grapple with. You know, when you're talking about the history uh, and just the overall tradition of a Jackson State University, you have to build on that foundation. OK, you have to build on the foundation that's been laid before you. You know, I stand on the shoulder of uh, great presidents uh, like Dr. John A. Peoples, uh, who was a legend here on campus and really brought us from Jackson State College to Jackson State University, really got us into those STEM programs and really helped enhance the university and set us on a trajectory that brought us into the 21st century. Uh, but we have to build on that. We have to continue to enhance that. And it takes investment. You know, I always talk about three things, infrastructure, student success, and financial sustainability. 
it takes all of those things. It takes the infrastructure, both the physical plant and those things that you don't see to really make the campus what it should be. Student success is our overall goal because again, in the end, none of this matters if the students don't graduate, if we don't keep producing those great alums like I told you about before. And to make all of this work, and this is where you know I say this is your part, money. It takes money to run a university. It takes money to invest in the new types of programs that we talked about. And that takes all of us. It takes your time, it takes your talent, and it takes your resources. So again, to not only have to remember the great experience that you want, once had, but for those students, that next 50,000 right of alums that come through Jackson State University, for them to have an even better experience, it's going to take all of us really working together and investing in Jackson State University. That's our story, and that's really the story of a lot of HBCUs. And I'm so happy that in this moment, people are really seeing the value of HBCUs, what we are, and yet what we can become still.